Today, it's all about the Beskar Spear from season two of The Mandalorian. I made this one for about $12 out of materials that were readily available. If you don't have any supplies and you're starting from zero, you could probably make this for around $25. I'll show you all the steps you need to make one of your very own. Interested? Here we go. The supplies for this build are fairly easy to find in low cost. You need a 10 foot long, three quarter inch electrical conduit, one pipe. You need a seven eighth inch dowel, wooden type. You need a square plate cover. It's almost five inches. Here's the details on it. Some key rings. A three quarter inch PVC coupling. And then a primer coat. I'm using textured black in this case. And some sort of shiny paint. And then another thing to have that's good is rub and buff. The tools you'll need for this build. You can do it all with a hacksaw, although I'll show you some power tools that I have that I use that save some time. Some cloth tape, doesn't have to be black. A tape measure, pipe cutter, clamp, permanent marker, some sort of screwdriver, scissors, gel super glue, a square is helpful, and then assorted steel wool, sanding sponges, and sandpaper. The crux of this whole build is the spear tip, the interface here. A lot of people have 3D printed this, but how many people have a 3D printer? Not that many. And I wanted to try to make it cosplay safe. Now you've got a metal blade here. It's completely dull, but let's talk a little bit about the journey of getting this spearhead right. I've gone on and I've looked at dozens of videos and dozens of pictures and this is about as close as I can get at this time I can think I might have to make another one of these so what I did is I started out with just taking some paper and folding it over and cutting it out now in some it's it's heavily curved and others it's got a little bit more of a defined angle here so this was my first attempt that seemed too wide so then just took a paper plate and cut it out, folded it over, and there you go. You can see that this design matches this bigger spearhead. And once you have this piece, you can come down and you can make it virtually any angle that you want. There, so let's give you the dimensions of this in case you want to make your own. That dimension is 55 millimeters, approximately. It is 157 millimeters long. And at the tip, it's about six millimeters. I'm sure people are gonna to try to make this out of foam, but it's just too thin. And if you make the foam too big, it's just gonna look kind of weird. It is a blade. So there you go. And if you recall, this is a seven eighth inch dowel that I've sanded down. <laughs> And then this is the interface. I'll probably cut it off here. But one of the things I wanted to do was I wanted to have some working space. If yours, if I would have cut it off early, then what I would have been trying to hold on to it there. So I figured use the a reasonable sized dowel. It's about two feet, a little over two feet long. And that way it gives you an opportunity to work the piece and then just come over here and cut it off. And then I'm going to glue this in place and paint it up first with a primer and then with a silver paint. And you can see I'm pretty happy with that. And the primer will fill in some of these gap areas. And I was gonna use epoxy, but I'm just thinking I'm gonna use super glue. First thing you wanna do is take the electrical plate, put your template on the top, tape it. You can either use double-sided tape on the back or you can tape the corners like I did. Using the permanent marker, Trace the outline on the plate, and then it's just a matter of cutting it out. There's a lot of different ways you could cut this. It's mild steel, so it's not that big of a deal, but 
I've got an angle grinder with a cutting blade on it. We're just going to use that, kick up some sparks and have some fun. Now that I have the two blades done, and I'm pretty happy with the shapes, I'm going to take this dowel. It's a 7 8 inch dowel, and you can see I've got it marked in the center and around the edge here. So then I'm going to taper it down, sand it, plane it, to get it so that it's got that shape. And then I'm going to cut it down the middle, 1 16th inch thick, because that's what this steel is, and bring that down in here like that. It's all going to work. Now that I got it down to the black on the end, I'm going to sand it even further. I put a silver marker center, and then I'll probably even go smaller than that. Just to get the shape down in a nice angle. You can see I'm getting there. <laughs> But I can't think of any other better way to do this unless you had some sort of lathe, which I don't have. If anybody else has a better idea or better way to do this, post it in the comments below so that we can all learn from this experience. Unlike an actual weapon, I want this to be extremely dull so it doesn't hurt anybody. So I'm running it a little bit on here and then just a final sanding on the sanding sponge. I had to move him to the garage because it was starting to rain outside. So I had to draw this line and I wanted to make it as straight as possible so that you have equal wood or structure on the side of this blade. And I did that through a combination of a caliper, a small square, and a ruler. The end of this tip is about six millimeters so I came over and hashed the line at three millimeters and then I came down here and measured this using a straight edge after I clamped this off and made sure that this didn't move one way or the other. I'm pretty confident with that line right there. Here's the issue. It's an at an angle so I'm gonna have to actually put it down on the scroll saw here at an angle. It's because I think if I do this, it's just going to rack around and just patiently cut that line. Now the blade here is thinner than this by almost a third, maybe half. I'm going to have to expand the slot on both sides. And I did a practice with a small dowel, which there you go. And I just did that purely by eyeball. I didn't even have a line here. So I practiced on this side. That's what one thickness of a cut is. And then I kind of moved the blade on one end and the other to get it wide enough to accept the spearhead. Practiced all on a cheap dowel and not the project work so that I'm ready for this. If you didn't have a scroll saw, you could use like a Japanese saw, something that really promotes a straight cut. And that would work, and actually that would probably be about as thick as this. Or probably the ideal tool to use is a band saw, but I don't have a band saw. I'm going to use this scroll saw. So here we go, let's give it a shot. It's now or never. Okay, fairly straight. It's not absolutely perfect. What I'm thinking about is taking a piece of sandpaper, actually two pieces of sandpaper or folding over a piece of sandpaper and just running back and forth to smooth that out. Well, let's do a fit check to see how close we are. You want it all the way down? <laughs> Look at that. 
Sometimes you just get lucky. And just so you know, this is 120 grit sandpaper. I just folded it over. It's a four by four sheet, I think. Five by five. And that's what I'm talking about. The same with the here. Just to straighten it out a little bit. Then I'm gonna round that edge there and get ready to glue it up. I've measured both sides. I've made this as equal as possible. Now I've taken a very sharp permanent marker and actually outlined the position on here so that when I go to glue it up, it will fit right in place. Some dots here. On one side and then some approximate dots because they don't have marked I guess it should have marked the other side too just going down the center here putting the glue to the side and then trying to open this up making sure I got the right side and slide it down in there Ooh, this is going to be a little fun, I guess. You got 30 seconds. Position it best as I can. And then I'm just going to hold it in place for 30 seconds. You could clamp it down, but it's got a funny angle going on here. And this is why the marking is so important. Okay, I want a little adjustment there. And be careful because it will make your fingers stick together. Fine adjustments. Just can feel it starting to harden right now. Yeah, see how it slides off a little bit? Cantankerous it is. I don't know why. Every time I apply pressure, it does that. Come on. Get to the 30 second ink. <laughs> it's starting to harden up. I've let the glue set. Pretty happy with it. There was a little bit of a gap here. I don't know if you can see it or not. So I used some wood glue. This happens to be Gorilla Glue, but it could be anything to fill in that gap so that when I hit it with the primer paint and the final coat, that would all seal up nice. And I had a little bit of a groove here, so I just took some toothpicks and broke them off in there. And then when I paint it up, it will make up the void. Now I'm gonna take and get some painter's tape to mark where it's going to go inside the spear shaft. It's going to be right there. I sanded it down so that it would slide right in. This is the part I'm going to paint. So I'm going to tape that all off, put a hook on this end so I can dry it off, and then I'm going to hit it with some Rust-Oleum Textured. I used this combination when I painted up Grogu or Baby Yoda's ball, and it worked out really well. So this is just a thick enough. It's almost like a primer because it has the texture to it. So it will help fill in any of the gaps and smooth out the sanding if there's any flaws. And then once that dries, I'm going to hit it with this premium metallic paint. You could use different paints and in this video in the Baby Yoda, and I'll reference it up here and down below. I go into a whole bunch of detail about silver paints and which is best and which has worked for different projects, what's worked best for me. So if you want to check that out, certainly do so. This is a little more expensive, but when you get the coupon at Michael's for 40 or 50% off, then it's almost as much as regular spray paint. The primer paint coat has dried. I've hit it with a sanding sponge to level it all off. Feeling good about it. Now it's just a matter of hitting it with this metallic paint and then the spearhead will be all done. I was getting ready to cut this off and it was just a little too big for the tube. So what I did is I just took some P60 
coarse sandpaper and just went back like this and I rotated the blade 90 degrees, did it again, did it again so I could get a nice smooth round sand and you can see that there's definitely lip there now it's 20.63 millimeters so if I want to know if that's good enough then I can just take my calipers and just run it down here and see if you can see that that's a smooth fit to there then it starts getting a little too big and I'm just gonna cut it with a hacksaw could do it coping saw whatever it is because none of this is going to show it's all here now all I have to do is put it together this pole is five feet two inches long I want this spear to be just over six feet because that's about what I've approximated it to I've got some lines here that I scribed in using a pipe cutter and I did that before I shine this up so I wet sanded some 320 grit sandpaper and got a lot of the coating off and then I just went in I used extra fine steel wool to kind of give it a nice shine it has a nice real smooth feel to it and then I marked the top and the bottom this is the top this is the bottom I sanded down the dowels I almost got a little too good about it because now it's a little loose so I'm going to use some of this hockey tape it's just cloth tape and the reason why I'm using cloth tape is to make up the difference and then I'm going to use a 30 second set gel super glue this happens to be rapid fuse and then put in the top and the bottom first thing I'm going to do is give you the dimensions of the markings here on the main pole so if you start at the top we're at 14 17 and 20 and I just did some double hash lines hopefully you can see them they're very faint and then I came down 20 inches and did the same thing three inches apart so this is at 40 43 and 46 so that's the main pole now what I found is I could make the impressions by just taking a pipe cutter and this is three quarter inch it just it's, this is the rough stuff so this is what it looks like and I did it before I shined it up and the reason why is because I think I got a little bit better impression or then I was just to do it post shine so what I did is I just kind of got it very just evenly and then I just went around and made a line hopefully you can see that and then I took it off and slid it down a little bit and made a second line and I'll go around a couple times and then that will give you an impression and then when you take the 320 sandpaper it kind of bumps up against the grooves and kind of makes them stand out a little bit more and then the extra fine steel wool to really make it shine this is a grid of one inch and one inch so if you want to stop the video you can get a sense of how big this thing is and I'll try to put it right there and if you look upside down you can get the <laughs> the metrics and then this is the bottom and I'll show you what each one of these is so I've already gone into a lot of detail about this these rings here are just keychain rings and they're the smaller ones I happen to have these around the house but what you're looking for here I'll just throw them right here on the they're slightly less than an inch and they have an inner diameter of about 20 centimeters 21 centimeters but they fit into the smaller ones and those fit out really nice this here is just a Another piece of conduit 
and that's three quarters of an inch long, slightly less than three quarters of an inch long. And I've just friction fit it here with the tape. And then these details, <laughs> again from different places. This is a, the bottom of a chair, rubber chair pad. You can see what the original color was like. And I used some rub and buff on it. Let it sit for about an hour or so, it soaked in. And then I just hit it with a paper towel and shined it up a bit. I pre-drilled this hole so the screw will go in there easily without any issues. You can see that I actually put a washer in there to help reinforce it a little bit. And this gives it kind of a little shock. You know, you'll be able to have that and it won't damage the floor than if you had that straight pipe. And then this is just a dowel. And I actually hammered that in place after I sanded it. And then this is just a three quarter inch coupler. And the dimensions is just shy of half. Let me see. Well, actually, it's 10 centimeters for you metrics folks out there. And it's just shy of half an inch. Do the tape here, and I'll just glue this all in place when I'm all done. So I put the key chain rings in there. That gives me a nice little detail on the top and the bottom. So I put that guy back in here. Put a couple dabs of this glue. And then, uh, running out of room with this long pole. And then put it in and boom, it's in place. And then I'm about ready to do the same thing on this end. So, couple. And the great thing about the cloth tape is that it soaks in the cloth tape and then it will bond to the metal we go and you got 30 seconds the great thing about this is it's symmetric so you don't have to line anything up necessarily maybe that little thing here if you want to have and there you go Mando spear now if i was to do this again and if you're going to do this maybe cut this down a little bit so more like that. So that's about a centimeter, maybe less on either side or three eighths, maybe. Yeah. So if you're going to make one of these, I would recommend that you thin the blade out that much more. This was based on some initial views of different things that I saw. I, and after I painted it up, I was just kind of committed. And here's the final product. I'm really happy how it turned out. It's slightly over six feet tall. It is combat ready. This thing could take a lot of punishment. Any cosplay lightsaber, this would crush it because this is steel and it would go up against any of those blades and just take it out. If you're interested in prop builds like this guy and this, cosplay, making and breaking things, designs of all kinds, home repairs, check out my channel and please subscribe because you never know what you're gonna see.